Hello and welcome to episode 2 in the series on GPU programming. In this episode, we are going to talk about the kernel grid. During the last episode, we've presented a vector addition kernel when we've launched blocks of two threads. If we launch the kernel with just six elements and two threads per block, the resulting kernel grid would look like this, where the code gets assigned a thread index and a block index. When running each thread in our block, it will run a copy of our code with values of block index and thread index set to match the currently executed thread. The block dim variable represents our block dimension and is constant across all threads. In our case, we set the block size to 2, so our block dim variable will hold 2. Some of the more alert viewers might have noticed that we keep using thread index and block index x values, and that might imply that there are more dimensions. And that is indeed true. We can run up to three dimensions by passing in a dim3 variable as our kernel parameters. So a two-dimensional kernel grid would look like this, while a three-dimensional grid might look like this. You might wonder, what is the purpose of multiple dimensions? And it mostly is just syntactic sugar. Some algorithms operate on multidimensional data, and checking boundary conditions for those might be easier. Also, they might be more readable when you express them in a row-column form. As a side note, there might be some edge cases where using a multidimensional grid instead of a single-dimensional grid results in a bit smaller register usage, but that is rarely of big importance. As an example, we can look into a square matrix multiplication kernel. As a reminder, matrix multiplication is a function that takes two matrices as the input and returns another matrix, whose entries are dot products between rows of the first matrix and columns of the second one. I do realize that the explanation was very brief, so I'm going to leave some more links in the description for those that are completely unfamiliar with the operation. Before we jump into the code, there is one thing that you have to know about memory layout. When we create a 2D array in our code, the computer still stores it in one dimension. The 2D access is just an abstraction that is easier for us to read. In CUDA, we get access to the row pointer, so we actually have to calculate the one-dimensional index ourselves, and we can do that by using our row and column indices. We do that by multiplying the row by our matrix width and adding the column index into it. To run our matrix multiplication kernel, we can assign each thread to one element in our output array. We first calculate our row and column indices based on the current thread and block. Then we do the boundary check not to read and write outside of our matrices. Next, we create an intermediate variable that will store our dot product, and we iterate over the row vector of the first matrix and the column vector of the second matrix, calculating the dot product. And finally, we save our result in the output matrix. Just as I mentioned before, we could also do the same thing with a single dimensional grid. We just have to parse the rows and columns from our x dimension. This adds a bit of an overhead, but it's negligible compared to the rest of the work done by the kernel. And a similar memory pattern happens when we extend our data to the third dimension. It just simply gets flattened out across each data dimension that we add. Can you come up with the formula 
for our one-dimensional index when we know our x, y and z coordinates. If you guess the following, you are right! Now that we have the theory behind us, I'm going to leave an exercise for those that want to practice running a multidimensional kernel grid. And the exercise looks like this. Taking three arrays as the input, a three-dimensional array A, two-dimensional array B, and a one-dimensional array C, and produce the output that is a three-dimensional array being a sum of three input arrays broadcasted to three dimensions. Please, share and discuss your code in the comments. Also, if you like the video, subscribe to stay up to date, leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. See you in the next episode. Bye.